Good evening, race fans. Yes, it's me, Dan Winchester, once again, welcoming you to Gladiators TV. For this time, it is meet the second meeting of the Plymouth Centurions up against the world-famous Bellevue Colts. The Centurions looking for a bounce back after last week's 52-38 defeat against the Kent Royals. And meanwhile, the Bellevue Colts starting their first match this season. In contrast, the tracks, 207 metres here at the Plymouth Coliseum and a much bigger track at Bellevue. Double header for the team here on Tuesday night and then up on Good Friday at the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. We're in for 15 races of fantastic racing. We're going to head into the pits and see some of the riders and get their thoughts on tonight's meeting. OK, so we're here trackside with uh, Dan Jilks and uh, Dan, your second match for the Centurion tonight. Looking forward to it? Yeah, definitely. I always look forward to coming down here. It's uh, you know, a track that we're just starting to get used to now. And you know, every meeting here, we're learning more and more. And we hope to do the same tonight. You scored 16 in your first match. Well, sorry, 13 in your first match, then 16 in your second match down here. Are you getting riders coming to you for the first setups now? Obviously, being like the, the more mature rider in the team now. <laughs> obviously, going for your age and that, you, learn, you know so much. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just... You know, we're learning all the time, you know, as a, as a team, you know, between me and my dad and my mechanic, we're, we're constantly learning and, you know, Plymouth's such a hard track to get dialed in at. It's, uh, you know, obviously the smallest track in the country and quite different from everywhere else. So, you know, it's just the learning really. And, um, you know, obviously last week, obviously it was a lot of the first, uh, well, you know, second time on first time racing for the boys. So it's, um, you know, I think we'll come together, and you know, in the champion. <laughs> in the championship um, but no like I said it's you know focus here today and um, you know try and do it as best as we can. Double header with the Bellevue Corps this week I'll see you come here on Tuesday then up to Bellevue on Manchester and Good Friday so of course two different tracks <laughs> so looking forward to that one as well? Yeah, yeah you can't really get too much different can you but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it it's uh, you know Bellevue's all you know a great track for racing on but like I said we're you know focus here tonight um, and try and get the job done. Awesome mate. well best of luck and wishing you a good race meeting right? Cheers thank you. So once again, trackside, we're joined by Steve Williams, the Bellevue Colts team manager. And Steve, you are down here a few years ago with Bellevue Colts. Of course, a lot of teams now, or sorry, your team is a lot of full of newbies now. Are they excited for the meeting ahead? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's our first meeting of the season. So, you know, the boys are itching to get out there. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're really looking forward to it. I think both teams are well balanced on paper. Um, but obviously, you know, the, the Plymouth boys have had a couple more meetings. <laughs> so uh, we've just got to, you know, take race by race, see how we get on. Of course, Nathan Avlett was here last week, obviously for Paul for Paul. So you're looking for him to give you like, like setups and stuff for your riders? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Jack Smith's quite experienced here because he rode in the championship, uh, Nathan. But, you know, it's, it's a learning league, so anything these boys can pass down to the likes of Freddie Odder, who's brand new to the league, then, you know, it's really worth doing. And of course, you got uh, JPB back as well. He was, uh, he's, he's, I think he, like, he um, packed in a couple of years ago and they caught, he came back in and is. How are you looking forward to him, for him getting going tonight? Yeah, I mean, obviously, to, to, towards the end of last season, Jack was coming pretty good. You know, he was uh, obviously, you know, he'd, he'd, uh, his first season back after being out, you know, with, with personal stuff. So, really pleased the way he sort of finished the season. And uh, I know he's, he's looking forward to this season. So, uh, you know, with a bit between his teeth. So, yeah, we've just got to, you know, each, like I say, each meeting as it comes along, hopefully, he'll build on from last year. Back to back meetings for the Colts against Plymouth this week. This week, of course, you come here tonight, and then of course you go out to the National Stadium on uh, Good Friday. Of course, two different, completely different tracks. Uh, how are the boys going to obviously set up, change and everything up for for here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's you know, like I say, a few of our boys haven't ridden here, so it's it's not only you know different, it's, it's brand new to them. So, yeah, you know, it, it can be difficult sometimes when you go to these tracks, but that's what it's about, you know, at this level. You know, they've got to gain that experience, you know, to move on. So uh, with, with, with the NSS, you know, it's it's one of those tracks, you know, that, that anyone can ride. You know, you, we can come in, we can talk about home advantage, you know. We don't really have that. You know, the way you see lots of, you know, riders ride around Bellevue, it, it can be difficult. So, yeah, I mean, we're really looking forward to it. You know, we've ordered the sun for Friday. <laughs> um, you know, it's just like being at home, this. But um, hopefully, yeah, you know, we can, we can get out there and give a good account of ourselves. You know, well, like I say, first meeting out there, they're all looking forward to it. So uh, we just want to get off to a, a, as decent start as we can, really. Awesome, Steve. Well, thanks for that, mate. And we'll uh, wish you love for meeting. Thank you. OK, we are close to starting time, so let's take a look at the full line of both teams. Starting with the visiting team, the Bellevue Colts, led number one by Jack Smith. Number two, C. Sam McGurk. Number three, Nathan Ablett. At four, Jack Parkinson Blackburn. At five is Harry McGurk. 
Number six is Archie Freeman. And number seven is Freddie Hodder. They're combining up just 39.68. Their team managers are Graham Goodwin and Steve Williams. On to the home team, Plymouth Centurions. At number one, Dan Jilts. At two, Connor King. At three, Richard Andrews. At four, Adam Extens. At five, the skipper, Henry Atkins. At six, Ben Trigger. And number seven is Eli Meadows. Their combined average is 38.62. And their team manager is, of course, Okay, so the lineup for E number one on the inside in yellow, Sam McGurk. Gate two in blue is Connor King. Gate three in white is Jack Smith. And on the outside in red is Dan Jilks. Joined here tonight by uh, Gareth Birming uh, Birmington. Bemister. Bemister. I know I get it wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Plymouth. Your first time down here. Of course, you're more into the grass track inside of things. How's that going so far for you? Yeah, very well. Very, very good. We had a good meeting uh, at the weekend. Really enjoyed it, but uh, yeah, excited to be here at the uh, to watch the Plymouth Centurions take on the Bellevue Colts. Tracks looking quite good, even though they had that deluge of rain quite um, a few minutes ago. So heat one coming up now. We've got McGurk, King, Smith, and Jilks. Heat number one. Start Marshall's happy, and away they go this time. And a fly from the outside. In fact, it's Connor King that's made the start. King made a start from gate two. Smith now in the second. Through comes Dan Jilks round the outside. It's a five-one. McGurk's there, pulled up at the back, a little slow, it's a 5 one at the moment, King there leading the way. What a... Oh, and, and down goes Dan Jilks! Oh, what a shame! What a shame there from Dan Jilks, and the red lights are on straight away there. And, well, Connor King made that fantastic start, and goes all over again. But, uh, what do you think of that then, Gareth? What do you think of that, mate? Yeah, nasty fall there, coming into this corner. I mean, it's so slimy at the moment. Obviously, the problem for the riders is definitely the conditions. It poured with rain before we came on, and it's very, very slippery. Obviously, vision's a problem as well, but, uh, yeah, nasty fall coming into this corner. So it's uh, Sam McGurk on the inside in yellow, Connor King, gate two in blue, and Jackson's on the out on gate three in white. So uh, can Connor King do it again? He made a fantastic start in that first run-in. But I think I think he'll do it again, but I'm not too sure because, of course, Jack has now got a second bite of the cherry. And he's got a lot of room out there as well. And away to go this time. And again, what a start from Connor King. Sensational from Connor King. Made the start his own. Down the back straight for the first time. King there leading the way. Jack Smith in second. Sam McGurk still finding his feet in third place. But Connor King there, experienced from last week's match. He's going full throttle. But he's got a right ripper and Jack Smith behind him. He, yeah, he's all over the back room at the moment. He's trying to find a way through, but obviously you can see Jack. He's going for the tear-offs. There's a, not a lot of vision behind. He's trying to stay out of the dirt line that's being coming off the back of Connor King. There really isn't any, anywhere that he goes. He's had to back off a little bit now because there's just no space, no vision for him to see where he's going. Well, with one lap to go, Connor King's going to get his first win for a Centurion. And uh, Jack Smith looks to have uh, consolidated second place and opening three or four the first race. And what a win! For Connor King, that's going to give him such a confidence boost. In fact, Jackson the pulled up on the on the uh, second turn there, but what a win from Connor King! That's going to really put his confidence on a on a a whole nother level. Yeah, great ride from Blue. Yeah, Connor King looking really comfortable in very tricky conditions. I think Jack just pulled up just because, like I was saying, he couldn't see where he was going, just to make sure he could. Uh, yeah, didn't do anything daft at the end, really. So the race result there was a win in Blue for Connor King. Connor's winning time 55.15. Second in white was Jack Smith. And third in yellow was Sam McGurk. So three all. So the line of hit for heat number two on the inside in red is Ben Trigger. Gate two in white, Archie Freeman. Gate three in blue is Eli Meadows. And on the outside in yellow is Freddie Hodder. Yeah, and the rain's coming down quite heavily again, Dan, so this is going to cause a bit of trouble. Of course, you see on the back straight there, a load of dirt's been put on the back straight. As you can see it there, all built up. So uh, let's see what happens here in heat number two, a trigger on the inside. Then we've got uh, a Freeman in white, Meadows in blue, and away to go. And to run to the first corner, it is Ben Trigger. Trigger their lead in, Freeman in second. Meadows in third, the track conditions are proving oh so uh, difficult now, but Trigger looking good out front. Yeah, Trigger made a great first bend actually, he made, uh, he made that inside line work for him, he just got on the pole line, made sure he stayed there, all the dirt was flying out to the outside, he had a clean, clear vision, knew where he was going and now it's down to the others to try and chase him. 
Well, the amount of laps that Trick has had around this place, you'd think he'd know this place on the back of his hand, which he does do. This will be a 4 2 for the Gladiators, which will put them up in the, uh, the first two races. One lap to go, Ben Trigger. He's looking he's great in this one. He's really on his, uh, on his rear end last. Uh, he's looking ago, great. But, uh, I'm just, just thinking he's coming into this corner absolutely on song. He's not looking uncomfortable at all in these conditions. A great ride from Ben and Trigger. Here he comes, going to raise the roof. Ben Trigger with his first win as a Centurion. Second place, the man in white there, Archie Freeman. Third, Eli Meadows, and fourth there, Freddie Hodder. So a good win there from Ben Trigger. So seven points to five in favour of the Centurions. Ben's winning time, 54.94, 54.94. Yeah, faster as well then than Connor. Fast time. Yeah, I said he was coming in here very quickly. He did look very quick. And of course, racing in these conditions, Connor racing it completely bone dry, and Trigger's now raced it in complete in in you know raining and uh, raining heavily. But uh, let's see what happens in this next race. We see the first appearance of Rich Andrews and Adam Extant. Well, here's lineup heat number three. We've got uh, Nathan Ablett on the inside in white. Next to him in blue is, is uh, Adam Extant. Gate three in yellow is Jack Parkinson and Blackburn on the outside in red. Richard Andrews. Yeah, I mean you could never you know never know what to expect with Richard Andrews. <laughs> Well, as I said last week, it was uh, well when they went to Bellevue a couple of years ago. Manny Bates said when they were at Bellevue, we're going to see classic Rich. Grass track in, leg back. Let's see what happens here. And away they go this time. And a flyer from Adam Excellence from gate two. Watch out, Pugs and Blackburn round the outside. But Excellence holds the line. Here comes Pugs and Blackburn round the outside. In fact, almost collides there with Excellence. Rich is having trouble back yet again, but Excellence is leaning out in front. Yeah, he's riding well at the moment. Oh, in fact, just... Parkinson's packed up. I was just keeping Where an eye on uh, Parkinson Blackburn oh, at the back. What's going on here? What's going on here? This is like, <laughs> what's going on? Survival of the fittest at the moment out there, isn't it? It really is. But Ex Extant's at the front looks great, but he's got the white helmet colour all over the back of him at the moment. Don't take rise on this front battle because it's part. It's uh, Extant's versus um, Nathan Ablett at the Nathan moment Ablett. chasing yeah, him down. Ablett's, they got the uh, the track so soon up, but it's one to go. Extant's there now. He's hugging the gate three position. He ma he's making Adam and uh, Nathan have to go wide on that corner. The problem is he can't go round him because he'll just get oh, blinded. He but he's, he's up got the inside. inside of him. What a move from Ablett. Yeah, great move by Ablett. He's got to just and pin him down now. It's going to be. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> oh. Wow, that wow. was very close. There's plenty of drive there somewhere. <laughs> Cracking, cracking race, cracking end to the race there from Nathan Ablett. And, well, uh, Nathan Ablett got the win there, just been told. Nathan Ablett got the win just on the line there. What a win there for Nathan Ablett. Yeah, Adam Exton celebrates anyway, despite... Was, uh, here we go, official result was a win. Is a win in white for Nathan, Ablett. Nathan Ablett. Nathan's winning time, 57.50. 57.50. Second, Second in blue, blue Adam Exton. And, and third in yellow was Jack Parkinson Blackburn. So four points to two. Here's the lineup on the inside in yellow. Freddie Hodder. Next him in blue, Eli Meadows. Harry McGurk goes in white off of uh, three. And Henry Atkins on the outside in red for the Centurions. Yeah, he's got a long way to go here, Henry, with all of that roost and dirt and mud and everything coming at him. There's a long way to go around that outside. But he knows how to do it. Yeah, well, Henry's been here quite a few years and he knows how to ride the track. But uh, if you were here two weeks ago, you would have seen he rode like a novice. But uh, here we go. And away to go. Sorry. And, and in fact, the red lights come on now. Yeah, Didn't not sure the what the problem there. was. I don't know what happened there. Not sure what the problem was there. Yeah, it seemed like a clean start to me. So let's see if Henry can make that fantastic start like he did in the first stage of that race. Let's see if they can all keep still. So, stand by for action, folks. Here we go. Rerun a heat four. Is underway. And this time it is Harry McGurk. That leads away into the first turn. Atkins there in second. That will give chase. Freeman there in third with Meadows at the back. Meadows missed the start there completely. But it's all down to Henry now. But what a start there from the man in white, which is Harry McGurk. 
Yeah, great start from McGurk that time. He certainly didn't let Henry Atkins do what he did to him in the first running of the race, but it's a 4-2 at the moment for the Colts, and Henry's got no answer to Harry McGurk, but of course he's having to deal with all of that spray as well. Well, it looks like they've got this track all sewn up and pretty much there. They're taking the lead there is Harry McGurk. Putting that under 21 experience to good use for Atkins there in second place, Freeman third. It's going to be a 4-2 to the Bellevue Colts, which will put them in the lead for the first time tonight. But there, Atkins there leading. Sorry, Atkins in second place. McGurk there, he's a bit shrunk cut on, that's for sure. But taking the win there, it's going to be Harry McGurk. With the win there in heat number four. Second, Hayes Henry Atkins. Third, Archie Freeman. And fourth there, Eli Meadows. Meadows there somewhat missed the start there in that first row in that first staging and he missed it in the second one too but a good win there for Harry McGurk takes the win in race number four the official result was a win for Harry McGurk second place Henry Atkins third Archie Freeman so Richard Andrew on the inside in red next to him in yellow is Sam McGurk gate three in blue is Adam Exton's and on the outside in white is Jack Smith now normally we go in the pits for a, a quick interview with somebody but of course with the weather like it is that's not taking place tonight, unfortunately, so... Uh, yep, start's very, very important. It's going to either be a snaking start or it's going to be a spinning start, but well, who knows and see what happens here. So it's Andrews on the inside in red, then next to him we've got McGurk, then we've got Extant, who won his first ride, and then we've got outside in white, it's Jack Smith, here we go, start line for action, stand the right for action, and away they go. And Extant again! But this time, Jack Smith gets across and leads down the back straight with Exxon's in second. Andrew's there covering third place. The rider's almost tippy-toe round the track here with uh, McGurk there in fourth. I think actually McGurk's gone down. No, McGurk has pulled upon the infield there. This one for there for, uh, for, for Sam McGurk. Yeah, he pulled off straight away. First bend, he, come, he's, he had problems immediately. But uh, yeah, Jack Smith looking very comfortable in this one. They all look comfortable once they're at the front because they've got that vision. They can see where they're going. But the lads behind have backed off a little bit, I think. Richard said a bit of point stealing from his team partner there because he had comfortable. He had um, second place sewn up there. But uh, Jack Smith there looking good. He probably and didn't want to keep getting covered in shale, to be honest. He absolutely. was getting absolutely first, smothered. First out the start normally wins here at the, at the Coliseum. There's going to be a win there for the uh, Bellevue man Jackson that'll do the team nicely it'll maintain their two point lead the win never Jack Smith second Richard Andrews and third Adam Excellence so Jack Smith there taking the win currently on five points from two rides but uh, a good win there from uh, from from Jack there Yeah, great win for Jack. Once again, tapes the flag. He uh, gets himself into that air, and he can see where he's going. So winning white there for Jack Smith. 56.16. Second in red, Richard Andrews, and third in blue, Adam Excellence. So here we go to heat number six. On the inside in white is Harry McGurk. Next to him in red is Dan Jokes. Next to him in white in yellow is Archie Fruman. And Connor King on the outside. So Connor with a win in his first race. That Dan Jules is going to be fired up for this one. He's going to pop out at a start. And I reckon he's going to get across the guy on white. And let's find out, see what happens. Let's see what happens here. So 14-16 in favour of the Colts as we approach heat number six. As you can see, the bikes, the, the, the riders there covered in shale. Gates three and four quite close together. Here we go. Stand by for action. And away they go this time. And as expected, there's Danny, there's Danny, uh, Dan Tilks. And is that Connor Coran is outside of uh, Sam McGurk, uh, sorry, Harry McGurk there. Not quite, but still Jack, Dan Tilks leading the way there. Yeah, all the racing gets done on that first corner and Harry McGurk had to make it, had to make it here. So he had to get through for that second place. Despite the fact that Connor King rode a good first bend, Harry McGurk was able to get up the inside of him and get past him. And now we're on for a 4-2 a at the moment for the Centurions. Well, he's got the track up. Oh, sorry, my voice is gone completely there. Taking the yellow flag, one lap to go. It's going to be Dan Jilks. And uh, as expected, he's going to have uh, a few rest bites out for him for the 10 when he comes out. And uh, that's what he's capable of in that sort of conditions. If he makes a start, he's impos impossible to beat. What a win there for Dan Jilks. Sensational. What a win. Great win. Great win for Dan Jilks. Very, very quick. Looked very comfortable, despite the fact that he hasn't actually been round here at all yet. 
It, track is starting to dry up though, Dan. It's definitely getting drier. So hopefully a bit of track grading, if it does happen, we're going to see what happens. So the win there in red for Dan Jilks. Second in white was Harry McGurk. Third, Connor King. And fourth, Archie Freeman. A 4-2, 54.59 in favour of the Centurions. And that's a 4-2 advantage for the Centurions. And it's 18 points apiece after that race there. Uh, Atkins red, Ablett white, Trigger blue, Packers and Blackburn in yellow. Ben has got that dry line on gate three. You can see it on the screen there. He's got that dry line. So he's going to be on that dry line, getting that, uh, that bite. So I reckon he could, if he pops out the start and Henry's with him, then we could be in for a good one here. And oh, where to go this time in a flyer. I said it would. I said he would. Trigger made the start. And he's, he's in second now. Atkins yeah. there leading in. Oh, and down goes the man in white, Parkinson and Blackburn. Yeah, it's a shame that he's gone down because Ben Trigger is really well placed here. Is he going to be able to get up? He is pushing off the circuit. That's great to see. So we're still on for a 5-1 here. This is a great ride by Ben Trigger in blue. Henry Atkins out, is out in front looking good. But Ben Trigger in that second, he's just got to hold off Nathan Ablett for another two laps. Trigger's got to be careful because Ablett is right behind him. We saw how he did the... Uh the dive on the inside. In fact, Ablett's gone square in that third in a third and fourth turn. Atkins there leading trigger. Second, this is going to raise the roof for the boys. Let's bring them home. It's going to be a 5-1, the first of the season. Henry Atkins and Ben Trigger. Yeah, that's great to see for Ben Trigger. I know Henry's a great rider anyway, but a 5-1 for the Centurions and great to see a young speedway rider like Ben Trigger going so well. So 5-1 for the Centurions, taking the win there was Henry Atkins. Taking the second was Ben Trigger. Third, Nathan Ablett, and fourth, Jack Punch Blackburn. 54.72 for that winning time. Great win there, Mousy Track Conditions, how are they? Yeah, it's getting better and better. Obviously, rain stopped now, so hopefully it stays like for the rest of the night. And um, yeah, a little dirt line's coming up, so that should be nice, yeah. I did see Ben start on gate three that time, and it had a dry line on it. And I got to see Pop down to start, and you were with him, that big 5-1. Can you hear the crowd having these helmet? Yeah, I sort of looked back when I went to Ben 3 and 4 and saw Ben was there, so I knew if I sort of stayed wide, I knew Ben would be close behind. So, yeah, no, good to get 5-1. Bellevue, a very rather famous team. Obviously, you go up there on Friday, put, of course, different tracks here. Massive track up there, small track down here. Does ever put off at all getting the right setup wise? Um, obviously, like, sprocket changing and stuff, but I was used to Somerset for a number of years. Obviously, I was bigger Somerset, but I still know how to ride a track fast. So, yeah, hopefully we can get up there and steal a couple points. All the best, mate. We'll see you in the next one, all right? Thank you. Cheers. I've got Dan here with me. Uh, Dan, obviously... Frustration for that first race. I mean, we saw it from up there. He obviously, he took the front wheel out. I mean, what was your what was your thoughts on that one? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. To be honest, it's um, every meeting this year we're getting excluded for stuff. We, you know, we're getting taken out for it. Um, yeah, I can't say too much. You know, it's in the past now. We have just got to focus on um, you know getting a job done. You know, the, the tracks you know very slick tonight, um, as you can tell. So it's uh, you know all about the starts and just trying to pop up them starts really. Well, I saw Ben Trigger pop out of gate three in that last one. And um, obviously Henry was there, so that that race line is on gate three now. Of course, I think you're on there. Are you on there in a the, in the future race? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm on gate three next. Yeah. So you ten, you got like that 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 um, dry line on the corner. We're gonna have that, mate. All right, we'll see you in the heat ten. All right. Cheers. Thank you. There you go. So there we go. That was Dan Jilks. Yep. Heat eight. Heat so eight. we've got yep. Ben Trigger, Trigger in, one. in blue. We've got Hodder in yellow. Connor King in red, and we've got on the outside is Sam McGurk. So here we go. Triggering King. Let's go racing. And away to go this time and a flyer from Connor King. McGurk round triggers outside. Trigger now into third place. Another 4-2 for the Centurions. But uh, Gaz Connor King's found his gating boots tonight. Yeah, it's very important as well tonight. Obviously, we keep saying about how important the starts are, but uh, Connor is really launching himself off the starts, and you can see he's at home and dry. Well, I say dry. He's home. He's going away from the rest of them at the moment, and uh, Sam McGurk's got absolutely no answer for him. Again, that blue line, well, that, that uh, dry groove on gate three, is now moving ever so slightly to gate four. So, all the slots coming off that track. But meanwhile, Connor King... This will be his second race win of the night. That's a winning heat one. And a 4-2 for the Centurions. Which will put him back, or put him further in front. What a ride from Connor King. And what a ride from Ben Trigger once again as well, picking up a point. Solid 
Absolutely. Wow, could Bellevue be on the receiving end of a Centurion's demolition? But well done there for Connor. His winning time was 55-47, 55-47, a win there for Connor. Second was Sam McGurk, third Ben Trigger, and fourth was Freddie Hodder. Man, I think Matty Bates is quite happy, don't you, don't you agree? Yeah, I think he probably is. It's 27-21, it's a six-point lead. It's exactly where they want to be at this stage of the meeting, I would suggest. So here we go then, heat number nine on the inside in blue is Adam Exton. Next to him in, blue, in white is Harry McGurk, gate three in red, Richard Andrews. And on the outside is Archie Fumes. We're waiting for Archie to come out of the pits. But here's heat number nine now, we're ready to go. The, Pl the Plymouth, the Centurions 27, the Colts 21. Of course, this is the first leg of this double header because the uh, Centurions make the trip up north to the Bellevue National Speedway Stadium, the most magnificent stadium in the country. Yeah, you couldn't have two different tracks, I don't think, could you, with this Absolutely. one being so tight? So here we go then, heat number nine. Is underway, takes off and away they go. And a good start from McGurk there. McGurk there taking the lead there, second place Richard Andrews. And, and yet again, Richard Andrews has binned it on the third corner. Yeah, it's very slimy, very slidey up there. It's a shame because Exton had done his job, he pinned down Archie Freeman, he pinned him onto the inside line so he couldn't attack. Richard Andrews was in that second place, but now it's gone, and now it's 4-2 to the Bellevue Colts. And they're starting to chip away at that lead once again. Well, keeping up for Freeman, he is closing the gap on Adam Exton. Uh, down the back straight for the third time. And uh, look at look at Sam, look at uh, McGurk go here. McGurk looks quick, but I'm keeping my eye on that second place because Adam Exton, he's having to He's having to really hold it in tight. You can see that Yellow's right up the inside of him, Archie Freeman. He's trying everything to get by him. He's leaning on him heavily. Is he going to hold on? The answer is yes. Yeah, good ride from Exton's under damage, immense pressure. Damage limitation there from... Uh, so a win for Harry McGurk, taking second place Adam Exton's. Third, Archie Freeman. Fourth, Richard Andrews. A 4-2 for the, for the Colts. 53.32 for the winning time there. Fastest and time so far, Dan. Ap well, that, that's a surprise there because obviously McGurk there got the uh, the drive out the corner and, uh, well, 29-25 now in favour of the uh, Centurions. King on the inside there. Parkinson Blackburn in yellow. Jilks in white, uh, sorry, in red at gate three. And Ablett on the outside in white. So then here we go, Dan Jilks on that favoured gate three. And away this time, first time, and as expected. What a start from Dan Jilks, that was sensational. Got the better of Connor, uh, Nathan Ablett there in the uh, gate four there, second. Third is King, and fourth is Parkinson Blackburn. Is that for Parkinson Blackburn? Yeah, and outside. King's got a job to do here. King's got a very important job. He's got to keep Parkinson Blackburn back there in fourth place. He pinned him to the inside, and then he's tried to go round him. But what a start from Dan Jilks. He absolutely flew out the trap. Well, I did say that Jukes was uh, meant business. And as uh, Parkinson Blackburn there's pulled up on the back there, unfortunately, for that for uh, JPB. Yeah, he didn't sound right in the first in his first ride either. He's definitely got problems and he's not happy about it. But uh, Dan Jilks looking very comfortable, looking very fast, and obviously did it all from the start as well. But now he's just tearing away from the rest of them. Well, this second win of the night should have been three. Taking the win there, Dan Jilks. In, in second place there was Nathan Ablett. And uh, third, Connor King. And uh, JPB's lost his uh, helmet colour there. So win there for Dan Jilks. I think he's lost his patience with the bike as well by the looks of things. He's left the bike there for the mechanic to retrie retrieve. 55.97 the final, the finishing time there. Dan Jill's taking the win there, Nathan Ablett was second, Connor King was third, and JPB was in fourth place. 4-2 to the Centurions, 33-27. So Jackson from the inside in white, next to him red Henry Atkins, in blue, no, sorry, in, in yellow, Sam McGurk, and in blue is Ben Trigger. Now of course I saw Henry, he, he did a bit of cycle speedway a long time ago, and uh, he actually won the under-13s team championship at Wensfield all those years ago. Uh, tune in next uh, Tuesday for the Gladiators against the Lions. I'm not sure when the uh, 
Centurions are here next. We'll have to find out on program if uh, my program's not sodding wet. <laughs> so here we go then. Smith, Atkins, McGurk, and Ben Trigger. Stand by for action, folks. Here we go. And once again there, Henry first in the corner. Pulling away from the two Bellevue Colts. Henry's got this track dialed in now. With McGurk and Smith holding second and third with Trigger at the back. But uh, Gareth, what a start there from Henry. Henry's looking great. He uh, got off the start very quickly. He's obviously looking very stylish at the moment. And uh, the yellow and white riders just got no, uh, no answer to him at the moment. Sam McGurk, he's going well. And Jack Smith's going well in that second and third. They do look comfortable, but uh, yeah, Henry looking absolutely brilliant in this one. Ben Trigger looking good at the back, but there was a lot of slop on the outside gate and he just, just didn't get away very well at all. So one to go. Henry Atkins there leading the way from the, the man in yellow. And uh, what a win there for Henry. That's what he's good at doing that. And uh, yeah. And a f unfortunately there for Ben Trigger finishing in last place, but a win there for Henry Atkins. Second place was the man in yellow, uh, Harry, so Sam McGurk. Third in white, Jack Smith. Three all, 36 plays, 30, six points the gap. Mate, where's this come from? We're flying tonight. Yeah, it suits me a bit, doesn't it? A bit more like Enduro style, covered in mud. I did say that on the common phase, obviously you've got the Enduro, that's obviously this, this track's going to suit you down to a T. Yeah, I love it when it's like this, perfect. Wish it was all week, every week? Oh yeah, I might just bring some like watering cans and just put it everywhere. Now of course, going from here to uh, Bellevue, obviously completely different tracks, uh, hoping it rains again? Yeah, I'd like it if it did, but either way, whichever, you know, we'll deal with it on the day and just see what we can do. Different rain up there, though, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be a uh, bit different, a bit bigger, isn't it? So far, the boys doing well. Of course, that first scene for Dan Jokes in that first race there, put the team a bit of a back foot. But uh, Connor, yourself, um, Ben, Henry, are all chipping in, going really well, aren't they? Yeah, everyone's doing real well. You know, they are quite tricky the conditions. So, you know, everyone's putting a good effort in. They're trying the best, and that's all you can do, isn't it? Um, but when it's like this, you got to think a little bit more. You know, it's not like just go all out. Just uh, think about what you're doing and just try to keep a bit of a steady, steady pace going. Always, mate, we'll see you in 14, yeah? Thank you very much. Well, a bit different than last week, wasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, not ideal conditions, is it? But, you know, got, got to race them all. And yeah, to be fair, it's not too bad now. So, you, so you, were, you were here last week for the pool pirates. I was getting the one point which helped the team win in that uh, rather classic match we had down there. Of course, you go up to Bellevue on Friday. Completely different track to here. Um, the boys looking forward to it. You want to keep it close, you want to keep as close as you can here tonight? Yeah, well, I actually missed that meeting. I'm at, I'm at Paul. We are against Oxford, so, yeah, I'm away for the first home meeting, but, you know, I just had to keep it close, and, you know, I'm sure the, sure the boys will get a result up there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, as I said earlier, it's not ideal, but you've got to get through it and dig in, and I just had to keep, keep it close. Do you ever think that you'd ride for both Bellevue and Paul, two very famous clubs in your career? No, not this early on anyway. You know, it's... Um, it's, it's a privilege and, you know, I'm really enjoying it this year. I you know, struggled here last week, but slowly been building the building and, yeah, you know, t today's a bit of an, an anomaly, really, you know, with, with the conditions and, the, you know, struggling a bit in a couple of my rides, but, you know, this is all part of it and hopefully we get it sorted. Well, we'll see you next one, all right? Cheers. Nice one. All right, welcome back, mate. Of course, you were here last year for the Gladiators, a, a brief film in the reserve spurt. Obviously, you're here at number one. Difficult condition for you tonight? Yeah, conditions are different. Uh... I remember having a meeting, I think it was against Leicester, when I was riding for Plymouth and it was like this and it ended up getting cancelled. But, you know, the track conditions have gotten better now. Uh, it's just tricky, you've got to try and make the start, which is hard because the start line's just flooded. So uh, it's just about getting around, really, and trying to get the points you can get in. Uh, so just trying to keep the boys' heads up, you know, if they're, if they're getting beat in a race, it's not the end of the world because, you know, when, when a track's like this, you can beat anyone, so... Obviously, you're still being mechanic by your dad, of course, a famous Bellevue guy back in the day. I remember him also having that big, the handlebars where one, like, one side was bigger than the other. Do you ever thought sort of doing that back in your seat, or is it, is it like the same having the same even bars? Yeah, you know, it, uh, every rider suits a different, you know, setup and style. And I'd say my style's quite different to my dad's, but and then, you know, my dad's brother rode as well. So we've all got a like, unique style and stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's good to be riding for the Colts and especially being number one and captain and 
you know, it's the first meeting of the year, so still a long way to go, and we've just got to keep chipping in. Well, I bet, mate, we'll see you in 13, yeah? Yeah, cheers. Obviously, a bit of a rainy condition so far. The boys are sort of battling the conditions, but your boys are down at the moment. Can you pull it back? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, you know, we've got Nathan, uh, we've got Nathan uh, Ablett and Archie in the next one, so... Uh, you know, we're hoping to try and, you know, get some advantage out of that. And um, just said to the boys there, you know, throughout up to the end of the meeting, try and avoid them last places. You know, we're six points behind. You know, I can only commend the lads. It's tricky out there. So, you know, they're doing a brilliant job. Couldn't ask for any more as a manager. So uh, we keep on going, keep on plugging away, and hopefully we can get something out of this next heat. Well, best of luck. See you later, all right? Thank you. Um, you know, I was... I was pretty confident, obviously, before the meeting we had a team chat. We had several team chats. Um, the boys seemed up for it. Obviously, there was a bit of rain. Um, kind of forecast, not forecast as heavy as it come down. So we we knew it was going to be a bit tricky. But Bellevue haven't had a meeting this season yet. So we knew it was in our favour. Um, but no, the boys have just gone out. You know, I said to them, don't ride with your, your throttle, ride with your head, because that's what's going to win you the races early on. And it, it has. Um, but Bellevue, I just said to the boys now, we can't get complacent. Bellevue are starting to dial in. You know, they're starting to figure out the setup. We're only six ahead. It's a decent lead, but it's it's not too big a lead. We can still throw it away. So we, we can't get overconfident and complacent. We need to keep pushing pushing on. Obviously, that exclusion from Dan Jilks in the first race kind of put on a bit better back foot. But fair play to Connor. I'm not starting that free one. I must be happy with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I was. You know, I, the Dan one was a hard one to call. I mean, from where I was, it didn't really look like there was contact. Obviously, the referee didn't think there was contact. Um... But Dan says there was, you know, it, it's hard to scale when you're not on the infield watching. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't bother ringing the referee because I thought he's made his decision. He isn't going to change it. Um, and I don't really want to get in the bad books of the referee that early on to the meeting because sometimes they can kind of penalise you for the rest of the meeting for that. Um, but no, you know, the boys are doing great. Uh, super proud of them. They've got to keep it going now. But I want to say props to Jack Parkinson Blackburn because he come off down the top turn. You know, I think his rider was in second or third so he could have stayed down and got the race recall but fair play to him sportsman like got up pushed the bike off and that's what it's about that's great to see fair play Danny so um, all this mate we'll see you now and the meeting and we'll hope you for a considering have a job cheers mate Freeman on the inside in white uh, sorry in yellow Andrew's there gate 2 in red Nathan Ablett gate 3 in white and on the outside is Eli Meadows 36 points to 30 Nathan Ablett really needs to do something here because he's had a few good rides, but he's really got to do something in this one out of uh, out of gate three because Freeman. otherwise they could go away with this. Freeman, Richmond, Ablett and Meadows. And away they go. Whoa, my goodness me. Richard took Ablett there, an absolute kipper. Yeah, hard first turn, but he had to do it. He had to move him over, otherwise the race was lost. Ablett will chase now, Ablett will chase in second place. He's hugging the inside, Andrew's going wide onto the dirt. Seems to be like a dirt a dirt line showing up now in this track. Yeah, there's a bit, little bit of a dirt line that Andrew's is finding. Like I said before, it's like a skid pan on the in, very inside, so they're having to go a little bit wider. And that is where Nathan Ablett's trying to make the bike work much more tighter on the corners than Richard Andrew's, but at the moment he's just spinning up off the corners and Richard Andrew's is able to maintain his lead. It'll still keep it at six points, a bit a six-point gap going into heat 13. Of course, the big heat 13. And of course, you've got the, they've got the uh, two ride and two win, Dan Jilks. But there we go. Richard Andrews does it again, wins heat 12 for the second week in succession. But the Bellevue Colts maintain that three-point, that sorry, that six-point deficit. So Andrews there takes the whoa. Andrews there takes the win. Second place went to. The man in white there, Nathan Ablett. Third was my Archie Freeman and fourth, Eli Meadows. Crucial win for Richard Andrews there. Absolutely, Absolutely. crucial. Yeah, that could be, you know, that could be a match winning manoeuvre that he did on that first corner. He had to go in there hard. He had to push Nathan Ablett wide. If he didn't that push Nathan Ablett wide, Nathan would have run away with that. Richard did exactly what he needed to do. That's experience showing there, especially in these conditions. A really good ride from Richard Andrews. Could be a match winner. And, uh... Jokes on the inside in red, Smith on gate two in white, Atkins gate three blue, and McGurk on the outside in yellow. 39-33 in favour of the Centurions. Here we go then, Henry Atkins in gate three. He's going to need to make use of that dry line on gate three. Dan picked that up on that earlier, and it's where Ben Trigger fired himself out of. 
but it really is for the Centurions to lose here. So tapes up and away they go and Henry Atkins and Dan Jukes have made a fabulous start into that first turn. Jukes looks over his shoulder, he sees Henry round the outside. They are on for a 5-1, it's a perfect start for the Centurions. Well, you wouldn't see that happen at all, would you? Look at that, Centurions 1 and 2. And the Colts have no answer for this. What a first turn there from Henry. Look, and Dan Jules looked across, see who's a team partner, and then pulling away for a 5-1. Absolutely, picture perfect from the Centurions. Jack Smith and Harry McGurk, they really didn't have anything they could do there. Henry Atkins, he did what he needed to do. And Dan Jilks was there as well to back him up. This is looking very good for the Centurions here. This could finish off the Bellevue Colts, the knockout punch as it were. Coming round to this Ben 3 for the final time. It's a fabulous win for the Centurions. A 5-1 once again. It's a win for Henry Atkins. Second place to him, Dan Jilks. And Harry McGurk third. Well, you wouldn't pick that one out of the hat, would you? That was a fantastic ride. That's what they could have done two weeks ago. But against the Royals of Botel and Morley, that was... Uh, that's how they do it. So, win there for Henry Atkins. Second place went to, da went to Dan Chilks. And the Centurions go 10 points up. 53.88, the final, the finishing time. Yeah, quick time and uh, quick race as well. Absolutely picked a perfect racing from the two of them. I mean, they are good riders. We're very solid riders, especially at this level. Did exactly what they need to do, and I think that's probably finished off the Colts now. Parkinson Blackburn on one, Trigger on two, Freddie Holder on three, and Excellence on four. A celebration, really, for the Centurions at this point, given the fact that they, uh, they are ten points up with only two to go. Well, I'm glad some people join it here because I'm I'm fifth I'm struggling like anything. <laughs> so here we go, Heat 14, Prom Race of the Night, Parkinson Blackburn, Trigger, Hodder, and Excellence away they go, and a flyer from Ben Trigger. Watch out for Excellence around the outside, Pons back from this across and sees his Excellence. But meanwhile, Ben Trigger there leading the way with his second Heat win of the night. But watch out for Parkinson Blackburn, he steams up the inside of Ben Trigger. Ben Trigger keeps it wound on, what a move from Ben Trigger! Trigger's riding brilliantly here, he's just held uh, Jack Parkinson Blackburn at bay, that's a great ride as he came around this turn, he didn't move off the line, and now Parkinson Blackburn's had to back off and try and regroup. But Ben Trigger, a brilliant ride there for the young man, he just put himself right in the middle of the track, he wasn't going to let Jack Parkinson Blackburn through, he was really stoic on that inside line, and now he's looking like he's going to get a brilliant heat win here in Heat 14. Another win for, for Bellevue of 4-2, another win for Plymouth. It will start the match, no matter what the Bellevue Colts do in Heat 15. The Centurions have won the first match of the National League. Ben Trigger from Jack Parkinson Blackburn, Adam Extance. And Freddie Order. Yeah, what a ride. What a ride from Ben Trigger. Fantastic. He leapt out the start like he did earlier, won the race. He's going to be really pleased that he looks absolutely delighted with that. And so does the, uh, the mascot there in the middle. Absolutely loving that one. So, the final race here. Points sewn up in the bag, no matter what the Colts do. It's five. It's a win for the Centurions. Duke's on the inside, Ablett on two, Atkins on three. McGurk on the outside. Well, it's been a bit of a walkover for the Centurions. Obviously, things very tricky for the Bellevue Colts. They found things very hard. A little bit of work to do here for Atkins and for Jilks, though. Let's see if they can bring home this 5 1. So it's a perfect start off the inside for Dan Jilks. A great start for him, and Henry Atkins is there behind him. Jilks looks over his shoulder. He sees where Atkins is. He sees he's in the second place. And now it's all about maintaining that 5-1. In yellow, Harry McGurk. He's very close to Henry Atkins. He's not going to want to go away. It looks like Nathan Ablett's pulled up at the back. That's a real shame for his evening to finish like that. But at the front, the Plymouth Centurions 1-2 once again. A 5-1 is on the cards right at the end here. That's going to give them a massive lead in this meeting. A huge win. Harry McGurk, he's still quite close to them, but he's certainly not going to get by Henry or Dan Jilks here. The last lap flag comes out then. 
Looking good here, the Centurions. This is going to be a huge confidence boost for the Plymouth Centurions. They had a disastrous first meeting a couple of weeks back. Now Harry McGurk's having a go at Henry Atkins at the late stages of this race, but it's going to be a 5-1, and it's going to be a win for Dan Jilks. A great race by the Centurions. 5-1 for them. I make that 53-37 to the Centurions. The biggest win of the season for the Centurions. And Dan Jilks, 12 points out of 15. So the win there for Dan Jilks, Henry Atkins second, Harry McGurk third, and fourth was Nathan Ablett. Yep, great scenes, great racing from the Centurions. Obviously, conditions not ideal at all, all evening. The track has got better and better. Final score, 53-37 in favour of the Centurions. They'll take a healthy lead up to the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester on Good Friday. You've got to be really, really happy with that. I'm buzzing. You know, they, we had a plan. We knew it was going to be tough. Bellevue, the track was a bit tricky, but we just excel. Like, I put in my notes in the programme that last time we raced, it was seven guys in one team, and tonight we really need to race the seven guys out of one team. Exactly what they've done. And yeah, you know. I mean, we've got to look at uh, Dan Jilks leading for the front there. What a night he's had. Yeah, I mean, you look at Heat 13 and Heat 15, it's a big boost for Henry and Dan with Heat 2 for the Gladiators meeting. So they know they can do that. They know they can be quick together. So hopefully that will pay dividends in the upper league. But it's great for our league as well because we know they're going to be an unstoppable parent at home. Adam Extance. I mean, where's he got that from compared to last week? Well, I you know, I think he's just, he's had a long time off the bike. He's, he's just enjoying it. I mean, obviously taking it seriously, but... Not too serious. He's just, just having fun riding his bike, and when he lifted coming out on the, the home straight, I mean that showed how skilled he is as a motorcyclist. I mean he's an all-rounder in motocross, enduros, trials. He does it all, and a lesser rider probably would have come off the end of that. But you know he, he was just clutching it, just cruising, having a good time. But you know, fair play to Bellevue. You know it was tricky conditions to start with. They dialed in towards the end, and you know it, it was it ended up being a good meeting with the track being relatively good, and it's yeah. the first win for Plymouth of the season. So it is, yeah, it is. Um, Compared to last week, obviously, coming here, first meeting of the season, didn't go the way you wanted. We've had rain tonight, tricky conditions. We know Richard Andrews gone down a couple of, couple of times. Are you OK? Yeah, I think with Rich, obviously, the last few seasons he's sort of ridden, he's really made that outside his, his sort of playground. It took a lot, long time for the track to do that tonight because it's a very wet out there still, even if you sort of go past the dirt line. But, you know, once that dirt line was there, he went out and popped that and won a race. And, you know, that... You know, meant the you know world to me. Meant the world to me because it's nice to see all your boys get a race win. And I mean, even Eli Meadows, he scored one point, but it was the first point he'd actually earned on his own. You know, so for him, that's a big thing. Like, I know back when I was riding, like especially in the early days, even if you're scoring one point and you weren't it, it's better than being gifted free. You know, so. But no, I'm I'm just over the moon with them. You know, they've done a brilliant job tonight. Result, good result, and uh, one very very happy team manager to go home tonight and uh, yeah, relax and enjoy it. Back for the next one. Lovely job. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Um, some really good racing, some brave racing from the riders. I think that Matty was saying just then just how, uh, how much credit to give to all the riders, not just the Plymouth uh, Centurions, but the Bellevue Colts as well. It's a gutsy performance, uh, but a great win for the uh, Plymouth Centurions. They must be very pleased with getting their season finally underway. Thanks for joining us here on Speedway Portal for this meeting here at the, uh, the Coliseum. It's been a great, uh, great night's racing under the lights as well. It's looking beautiful now. Until next time, we'll see you soon.